Hi, my name is Bonnie Tyler. Check out my new album called Between the Earth and the Stars. I know, it's incredible, isn't it? You know, 50 years in the music business. I mean, I don't even feel 50. Inside, I feel more like 38. But I've just made one of the best albums I've ever made in my career. And it's called Between the Earth and the Stars. Yeah, but I don't think of it as a business. It is. It's two words, as Francis Rossi says, right? Show business is two words. Show business. <laughs> but anyway, of course, when a new album comes out, you know, I do the promotion because I had so much fun doing the album. I'm not going to let it slip by without doing interviews, you know, so that everybody don't find out about it, you know. I want everybody to know about it. So to do these interviews is a sort of business, but it's for my own good, you know. I never thought when I entered that talent competition when I was 17 and I sang Those Were the Days by um, Mary Hopkin, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, I came second, right? And I won one single pound. I used to work in the day, but then I started singing in the night because I came second in the talent competition. And then I went to an audition that was advertised in a newspaper looking for three girls to join a harmony band. And I went along to the audition and there was like 35 girls there, but I got picked as one of the girls. So I was like thrown into the deep end. I was working like six nights a week with this harmony band. I loved every minute of it. But then in 1971, I formed my own band then called Imagination. And it was while I was with that band in a club in Swansea in Wales that I got discovered by mistake mistake because the guy, the talent scout, Roger Bell, who came down from London because he'd heard about the boys singing in the club upstairs. But he walked in on the wrong floor and he heard me singing. So I got a great opportunity. So I went to London to make some demos. Well, it is a dream come true. I'm a working class girl, but I always knew I wanted to be a singer. So, yeah, it was a dream then. But then, in 1976, Lost in France became a huge hit record for me. My first international hit record, and in Germany especially, it was in the top ten for six months, you know. And my life changed then. And that's when my journey began. Well, it wasn't meant to be an album. I'll tell you exactly how it happened. My very first bass player from the 70s band that I was talking about earlier, when, before I was famous, I was uh, in the band in Swansea, all around the clubs and pubs. So he phoned me up and he said, Gaynor, he's always called me Gaynor, my real name, you know. He said, I've written some songs, I'd like you to listen to them. I said, oh, come on, Kevin, you're a bass player, you're not a songwriter, but I will listen to them for you, but I'm not going to listen to them in front of you because, you know, he knows what I'm like, I'll say it as it is. But after he went, I listened to the songs, I rang him back immediately and I said, my God, Kevin, where did these three songs come from? I said, oh, I'd love to record them. So what we did was Kevin played them to David Mackay, my very first producer that produced my first hit records and my first two albums in the 70s. 
He sent them to David and asked, what do you think of these songs? They need a bit more work on them, but are you happy to arrange and produce them? So when they were ready for me, once they'd done that work, I went into the studio and recorded these three demos. I know, he's done an incredible production of it. And we had so much fun making the album, you know, because we did it at his house, most of it, you know, the duet. He went down to Rod's house and recorded it in Rod's studio. And with Francis Rossi, we went to his studio. But the rest of it was done, like, in David's studio at home. And it was wonderful. I wouldn't start till, like, 12 o'clock because I'm not a morning person, you know. I like my sleep. And then we work till five. He's got a fantastic work ethic. He works from 7.30 in the morning until five o'clock. I work from 12 o'clock till five o'clock. And then his wife would cook us a lovely dinner, you know, me and Robert, they cook fantastic. And we'd have lovely champagne, red wine. We were going back like 40 years, but it was like as if it was yesterday. Oh, no, how lucky am I? But I asked her to. She is a friend with my brother on Facebook, and they get on well. On I said, do me a favour, Paul. Will you ask Amy Wadge if she'll get in touch with me? Because I'd love her to write some songs for me if she's got the time, you know. So she got back to me immediately. We corresponded together then. I said, really, I need some up-tempo ones, you know, because I've got loads of ballads as well. And she said, well, I've got a couple of songs. I'll send them to you. And one of them was at Tempo, Bad for Loving You, which is fabulous, right? The next day, she sent me a song again. She said, Bonnie, have a listen to this. Last night, I got inspired about you when I was in Nashville in my apartment on my own. I wrote this song especially for you. And I said, what's it called? And she said, Older. I said, thank you, Amy. <laughs> but, oh, my God, it is beautiful. Yes, and hopefully on this tour, they haven't actually decided where they're going to film it live, but I'm doing a live album from one of the shows. So when that's announced, I'll be able to put it on my bonnietyler.com website, my new website. If anybody doesn't know, there's a brand new website. <laughs> 